You are watching Math Feats episode 22. I'm gonna make a video for each anime this season. You're watching episode 22. Okay, so I just finished watching episode 1 and some of episode 2 of Kawai Kareba Hentai Demo Suki ni Natte Kuremasuka. Or in English, that's Would you love a pervert as long as she's cute? And then there's another name that's Hensuki. Are you willing to fall in love with a pervert as long as she's a cutie? This show is quite interesting. I've got quite a bit to say about it. Where should I start? How about we start off with the summary? So this anime starts out with basically our main character who is waking up and realizing that his little sister is in the bed with him. You know, classic trope. Oh, those wacky motos always sneaking into your own bed. So basically nothing uh, all that interesting happens for a bit. Basically, the show just kind of you go through and kind of meet some of the characters as you just follow the main character and he is just like interacting with all these girls and he's in this club. Okay, so we cut to basically him being in class and he gets a text or just like class is ending and he gets a text from somebody saying to come to the Shoto Club. So he goes into the Shoto Club and he's there to basically help his senpai who I guess is the leader of the club. And the way this character is introduced is quite interesting. She doesn't seem to actually be the kind of character that she really looks like she would be where she just like, you know, silent and like intellectual student council president kind of girl, which is what I think when I see her. And she's introduced like in the middle of painting something with, you know, a paintbrush. And it looks kind of good. And she says to the main character, whose name is Keiki-kun, and people, uh... There, there's a reference to that later on. Anyway, what she says is, we don't put much thought into this high school period of our lives, but it could be a precious experience we can never return to. So why is it that we waste this precious thing away on silly errands like cleaning the club room? And it like pans out to see the whole entire room like covered in a whole bunch of that papers in that black ink that she was just painting in and so right off the bat she kind of seems like nothing like what you would expect this kind of character would be because she looks completely like one of these characters you know typical gorgeous Japanese like black hair pure skin kind of shit characters where she's like the student council president and shit but this girl is just kind of seems to be the complete opposite of that She's just, you know, more about being petty and like more childish and but also seems to have a hint of being like wise in a weird way. But like, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, just just by the way she's introduced a really, a really interesting, intelligent character, you know, at which point a lolly shows up and she like stands up and like wakes up from being inside of the papers of all the trash I guess. Her name is Yuika and then also another girl shows up and her name is Nanjo and she has like red hair and is just already starts to do the cleaning because she's just like I don't know maybe the most mature of of the group so far and then of course his sister walks in because I guess he's the only guy in this club of all girls. The art style I like it. I think it looks good. Even the backgrounds in the show aren't that bad. Like sometimes it has that af it has that like weird thing that a lot of anime do where everything is weirdly clean and like everything looks smooth and the characters don't look like they belong in the world. But I think these characters belong in the world quite well and they look they look really good in the world. And also the world is quite colorful, so it so it also puts like a spin on it. I think there's a whole lot more design to this room than uh than there is in like any other material i mean this i think is adapted from a light novel yeah the art style is odd looking but i love it i think it looks really great i really enjoy the character designs too i think they look really good good shit anyway so 
what happens next is that they're basically doing like a, a cleaning montage of them just cleaning the club room. And then after that, you know, they're like chilling and be like, ah, oh, yeah, that took a whole lot. It's a whole thing to just clean this club room. After they're done, they're basically, he's like head patting his little sister like, oh, and he says this line, it's natural for a brother to pamper his little sister. And his sister like is liking it and enjoying it a whole lot being like, you know, head patted and shit and just like being caressed by her brother. So, you know, they have a real uh, touchy relationship, I guess, sometimes. I don't know how that works, because at other points, like at the beginning of this episode, I mean, he was like, how'd you get in my bed? Why'd you get in my bed? And he was like more upset about it, but I don't know. Dude, her tits, man, they're just so big. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> they're just too big. So basically, Kate Coon, after that, they're done and he tells everyone else they can go home as he finished cleaning up the room or whatever and decides to lock it up and so what he finds is a letter that is just sitting on a desk and it says it's addressed to him and now previously he's been like like literally right before discovering this letter he's like walking to that room like man and he sees like he sees a a couple and they're like, you know, and he and he says, oh, man, fuck all these normies or some shit. And he's and then he's like, man, I wish I could be in a relationship. Right. He's just like super, super jelly about it. It's like, when am I going to when will I, you know, get in a romance? And then that's when he discovers this letter. And so he opens it. Right. And it says, I love you. Right. Basically, that's all it says. It says address to cakey, whatever. And it says, I love you. And then right next to it is what looks like a cloth, but as he picks it up, he realizes it's, realizes that it's a pair of panties. And so he's like, what? And whatever. So, you know, I mean, he just takes them and goes home. And he tells his friend about it. And his friend is like, dude, somebody could have done it. I mean, it has to be somebody in your club, basically. So it's one of those four girls minus your sister. So it's one of these three girls, Nanjo. And I already forgot how to her name. So. <laughs> and they say... She, they call this woman who left the panties Cinderella, even they're like, but you know, they make this whole thing about Cinderella left her glass slipper basically. And, but this Cinderella has left her panties instead. Quite a clumsy Cinderella indeed. And so now our main character is just on a mission to find out who was it that did this. And he's talking to all the girls, not like saying specifically what's happened, just like seeing who could it possibly be that did this. And he's just like having these interactions with everybody. They're like, you know, kind of cute, like interactions that just kind of characterize the characters basically as as we know them already so far. One of the interactions he has with the lolly is about how the other girl's tits are just so unreasonably huge and she's asking him if he agrees and he's like yeah i literally totally agree and then she like i don't know she fucks with him in some way and then she tells him that girls only um are mean to guys that they're interested in and then there's a there's a third scene of him talking to his friend again and they're like playing basketball and they're basically having another scene of just like deciding or figuring out who it is and it's also kind of coupled with a scene of him with a girl because nanjo is actually watching and and he stares into her and basically just like forgets where he is and he gets hit by a basketball and passes out and then he wakes up and he is in the nurse's room and Nanjo's sitting next to him and you know she's just like you know just watching him a whole lot happened in this episode man and so he asked Nanjo that if he was interested in somebody would she support him and she said no she would not she said she would totally not support that and then she walked out and so Keke Kun is walking home whenever he hears basically senpai and she is with a dog and it's like this really growly looking dog and in the manga it looks really it looks way different so i think it's funny that they did that and it looks like a fucking killer dog and she said that she named it vegetarian but that you know vegetarian's lost and needs to find its his owner because she's not or it's not her dog obviously and she's just being really cute and i love senpai's voice actor because she is just so cute and she says like 
I don't think that he knows Japanese. <laughs> and then the owner of the dog shows up and she takes the dog and this show is fucking layered. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna get to it. Don't worry. And you see the lady like pat the head of the dog. That's, you know, her actual dog and shit. And you know, they walk away and, and she says that she envies that just as the like lady is walking away and like scolding her dog. And Keiki basically says, you must really like dogs, senpai. And she says that she would like Keiki-kun to basically caress her head because of like what he did with his sister earlier that day. Would you know he was patting her head and you know caressing her because you know of just he's pampering his little sister, you know, that thing. And she's saying that she wants a reward because of how hard she worked for the contest that she was doing, that she was a part of that she wants a reward for uh for that and she wants a reward to be uh him caressing and patting your head and shit and he says he'll do it and so he does it and uh you get a like a three second long scene of him like caressing and like patting your head and shit and uh you see people in the background walking by and like you see high school girls who are like kind of like oh ho, 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 like dance laughing and shit you know they're like walking by and stuff and uh older people and among it was just older people who were walking by and had kind of a different context but uh you know this time the anime decided to you know make it high school girls which is pretty funny and so then senpai basically kisses senpai on the cheek and she says that's a reward for always being so kind and he says fuck and goes home and you know he's just like wow that's crazy and uh so then you get a scene of him at his house and he's uh talking to his sister who's making dinner i think and he's talking to her and he asks her but like not looking towards her because he's doing something with his shoes and he asks her hey do you know who was the last person to leave the club room and then you get like a really like she there's a long silence and then she says uh yeah i think it was senpai who uh who left last but like i mean i'm gonna tell you right now i don't know if if it, if it was her but i mean it was definitely fucking her just by how you know fucking suspicious she's being anyway here's where the crazy shit starts to happen okay so basically there's a whole lot of stuff you know she kissed him and then the other girl you know she kissed him and shit so because he thinks it was senpai he decides that he's gonna go and ask her on a date and he doesn't really get to ask her because she snuck up behind him and heard what he said and so uh she she heard that uh he wants to go on a date with her or something and he wants to know about or how he was like freaking out about how to ask her to go on a date with her or to go on a date with him and so basically she's like oh you want to go on a date okay and so then you cut to them being at a fucking at a spot and she's like eating a dessert that seems to be really expensive and he's like you know this is fraud or some shit you get some information about how like a background of how he you know ended up at the shoto club but you know whatever who really cares and then he asked her are you hiding something from me and then he said maybe you have some special emotions towards me and then she like hears that and like seems pissed off and she like gets her bag and just runs out of the the place that they're in and she just sprints out and he's just sitting there like well maybe she is the cinderella indeed you get a scene of him talking to his friend again and every time he sees her her senpai's name is actually sayuki senpai i guess and basically every time that keiki sees sayuki she like acts like she can't seize him and like starts to run away basically and is just super like actively avoiding him and then he asks Nanjo because he's all depressed and she's like you gotta do you gotta do a a wall slam you know you gotta slam her against a wall that's the most effective way to to stop a girl from getting away right and he's like huh that's some weird relationship uh like romance advice that you wouldn't be the kind of person who would know that kind of thing. And she's like, yeah, you know, um, wall bangs, uh, you know, if it was somebody that I didn't like, I'd probably report them. But if it was somebody I like, my heart would probably like beat or something. And that's because, you know, he, uh, he asked how do girls feel about that? Getting wall banged or wall slammed. And so he's like, okay, well shit, I guess I'm going to do that. So basically he's walking and he sees senpai forgot her name already and he chases Saiki senpai and basically this time he catches up to her and he wall slams her and then she like 
freaks out and then she says that she's gonna report him to the police and he says that if you hate me go ahead and do it she asks him what does he want and he says i know your secret sayuki senpai and she says since when so she completely fucking bought it and he says just recently because he got suspicious with her attitude so she tells him to i think meet her in the club room tomorrow because he tells her that he doesn't necessarily dislike her for uh for knowing her secret of course, obviously, this is a misunderstanding. He's talking about secret as in sending that love letter to him. Yeah, so she says, you know, go to the club room after school. And so then you basically cut to him at home staring at the panties because he, he sees them as hers now. And then after that, what you see... Okay, so then we get to basically the end of the episode where she is... He meets her in this room and she tells him to close his eyes and he closes his eyes and then she tells him to open it and open his eyes and he opens his eyes and she has her shirt off and is just like, you know, in a bra and she has a collar around her neck and she puts a leash on the collar and she says, can you please make me your pet, Keiki Kun? That's right. She's like a super maniac chick okay so at what point this show is fucking crazy so halfway through the episode what made me look up the manga was because i was thinking that everybody in this character is just i mean in this show is just so hot like even the lady who came to pick up her dog is so like weirdly hot like was this like anime or was she hot in the manga and so i looked up the manga because apparently there's a light novel and a manga. I think what it is is that maybe they were both adapted from the light novel and that the anime is not adapting the manga. It's adapting the light novel also because they do seem to be quite different, you know, in like how things can be interpreted from how this anime looks versus how the fucking the, the manga looks. But frankly, this this show just ends up being a sad, sad repeating of what's been said 10,000 times. The manga is just better. It's just so much better. And her tits look more realistic. This, like, you realize that the show is, like, super bland. Yeah, anyway, that lady, by the way, who was hot in the anime was not hot in the, in the manga. Not at all. And I'm gonna show you guys... Basically, I'm just gonna like screen cap scrolling through the manga just because I think that the manga looks so fucking good. So anyway, I ended up reading a whole lot more of that manga and I didn't really read it. I kind of skimmed through it, but there's just a whole lot more to it. Before even finishing the episode, like because right before the big reveal at the end of the episode, because I was already looking at some of the manga on my other screen, I just was like, okay, I paused the anime and I looked back at the manga to see that final part to see what it was. And I was like, what? That's fucking crazy. But it's all so much fucking better in the manga. Everything looks so much better. You lose out on a whole lot, a whole lot of interesting things. Like parts where when I said earlier where he is just like, man, I wish... Really, he, he didn't even say any negative, anything negative about the couple at all that he saw at the beginning. But like in the manga, he literally says like dot or like he says die normies re. That's what he fucking says. And there's so much more shit where the manga just like has made the experience way better than the anime is. And it's kind of sad because the anime does look good. And I do enjoy it in some parts, I like the part where they made that lady hot and where they made a... Uh, like, you know, they made the high school girls be the ones laughing at them while she's while he's caressing him or her. But then there are just moments where it's just like full on through everything else. The manga is just good the whole way and looks great. And you're just going to like this show. If you just want to fucking watch a show or read something that's like that is just, you know, porn without the like actual sex part. This show is quite good for it. I'd say this is a really like... No, wait, show? No, not the show. I would read the manga. Yes. Show? Fuck it, dude. You know, I mean, it's good. I think like I did download the second episode a bit so that I can see 
how because after i saw the first episode i basically read through that chapter this episode is like five chapters by the way is like actually five chapters of the manga which is a whole fucking lot and it skips a whole fucking bunch of shit which was really annoying the manga just did it better dude it's just just sing along if you know the words the manga is just better there's 20 chapters out of out of the manga at the moment uh i read to 17 or i mean to 13 and i i keep saying i read it but i didn't read it i'm i really can't stress this enough that i fucking just like literally just scrolled through and just like looked at all of it just as i saw it and the uh, just like kept looking at the art and the art just looks so much more creative there's so much shit happening the anime has some backgrounds and they have designed the backgrounds but like it's still for a show it's not like it's worth watching that show for just that when this manga does everything so much fucking better you can probably just like look at the pictures and get invested in what's happening the girls look 10 times hotter and at all times rather than at certain seconds during the anime every single panel is just like a really interesting thing to look at. Anyway, I'd like to say if you are a hardcore slut masochist pervert, call me. Anyway, to answer that question, are you willing to fall in love with a pervert as long as she's a cutie? Hell yeah! This fucking show looks great and the manga is even better. And the manga's girls are great. Anyway, so what you learn is that basically everything that we've seen in this first episode are just like things to characterize all the other characters. So like, for example, Nanjo, who is a girl who's who was watching them, watching them play basketball and uh, goes on like a hangs out with them at another point. I think they're childhood friends or something. But basically what Nanjo ends up being is that she is just a Fujo. And she was like, I'm, I was a Fujo the whole time. And she fucking, <laughs> it's so funny because she just wanted him and his best friend to get together. And that was her thing. So when she was saying she, so when he asked her, would you support me being with anybody else or me being with, if I was interested in somebody and her saying no, it was just because she's only supporting him being with his you know his friend and then like it all makes sense it's like this is that's what's really interesting about this guy's writing is that like everything just like seems to like be that literally is you know like Chekhov's gun the fucking manga or anime you know where it's just like everything is only here if it has meaning you know and there that there's something that happened there's so much that the anime cuts out like even at the moment where like where in the anime where Keiki Kun is told to close his eyes in the manga she literally like there's a whole lot of thing about him talking about or thinking oh man this is it she's gonna kiss me and then in the anime it's just nothing he just closes his eyes and then opens it but in, in the manga it's like he's like puckering his lips and shit like thinking that she's gonna kiss him so it's just like stuff like that so many things that just end up being missed out even though they added and like when i watched the that anime part i was like dude that looks like that that's what i thought i thought uh so he's gonna think that she's gonna kiss him right like that's what i thought you know i thought it would have been interesting if that happened or you know not that i thought not that i would have thought that would have been interesting but i mean that's just what i was expecting to happen and and what ended up happening was something completely different. But I mean, it still happened in the manga, but like, you know, they referenced it in a way. It's like, that's what he thought, even though that's not what happened, rather than just not mentioning it at all. And just having it be, he just closes his eyes and then opens them when she tells him to. So like what, what I was saying about Chekhov's gun is that she was only there because, you know, because she wanted him to get with his best friend. Of course she was there watching them play basketball. You know what I mean? It's like... All of this, that scene where, where, why do I keep forgetting her name? That scene where Sayuki is, you know, with that dog and she says that she envies the lady like scolding her dog as she's like patting it and like taking it. She's talking about how she envies being a fucking dog and how she likes to be pet like a fucking dog because she wants to be his, she wants to be his pet. It's fucking crazy. It's like all of this is like, these only are here just to, you know, to like show parts. So you can just read in like infinitely to like, like every scene anyway another thing that ends up being really interesting is that the lolly i don't remember what her fucking name was yuika which i'm pretty sure gets revealed in the second episode is that yuika actually wants him 
to be her slave. She wants him to be her slave and she's been fantasizing about that and you see that in the manga. It all looks so fucking good, dude. If there's one thing you can take away from this video, go read the fucking manga because like this anime is not bad. I enjoyed it, it was fun, and it did literally do its job. It got me interested in the source material, but go read the manga because the manga is unreasonably better. And I wanna continue reading this cause I'm kind of interested in how this goes and because of how interesting this guy's writing is. Anyway guys, that's all I've got to say about Kawai Kareba Hentai Demo Suki Ni Nate Kuremasu Ka or Would You Love a Pervert As Long As She's Cute. This has been Mad Feats episode 22. Like, comment, subscribe, and just whatever. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.